This is uh, Navigating All the Knowledge. We're going to talk about semantic knowledge uh, navigation. My name is Jim Weaver. I'm with Pivotal. Uh, there's, there are my coordinates. Uh, got, uh, my, my blog site is javafexpert.com, Twitter, javafexpert, and uh, I also have a musical blog. It's called Cultured Ear that uh, uh, would be great uh, fun for you to visit if you're interested in kind of music composition. So I've written several Java books, and um, uh, the most recent one is Java FX and, and Java and Raspberry Pi. And I'm a Java champion, uh, Java one rock star speaker, plays well with others, that kind of thing. And this application that I'm going to be showing you is uh, live at conceptmap.io. So if you wanted to play along with me, you could certainly do that. Um, it's open source. I've got an Apache 2 license. I wrote it in Java and using Spring and, and uh, other technologies that uh, the P Pivotal curates. I, I do work for Pivotal, and um, I'm a developer advocate. So uh, the, the idea here behind this session is, um, is something that I've been wanting to do for a long time, and that is uh, to be able to... Uh, to access the resources of Wikipedia, but rather, in an, rather than in an unstructured manner, clicking links and kind of um, almost randomly trying to research something by clicking links and hoping that, I'm, uh, that I've got my arms around the subject, uh, what I wanted to do to, was to be able to navigate those subjects semantically. So, um, using uh, semantic relationships. And, um, and so when I found out that um, one of the projects in Wikimedia besides Wikipedia was Wikidata, uh, which has those semantic relationships, I went ahead and built a tool that would allow me and, and you to be able to do that. So uh, Wikidata provides semantic information, semantic structure, to Wikipedia articles, as well as language translation. So it keeps uh, different languages for different articles um, and, the, and the concepts for them. And I'll, I'll drill into that in a minute. So um, Wikidata, as you see over um, at the top, Wikipedia plus Wikidata then allows you to navigate the, um, the Wikipedia uh, articles using semantic relationships. So all we had to do then is, is create an application that would, uh, that would um, access those relationships. So the big idea then was to build an application called conceptmap.io. So you can go there if you'd like to, um, to be able to uh, navigate those together. So it's designed to facilitate learning, teaching, and research. Uh, learning, if maybe, Maybe you want to just learn about some subject, and, um, and you can go in and navigate the, the subject and the related items, and then see the Wikipedia articles at the same time that you're doing that. Or maybe you want to teach somebody something. So maybe you want, maybe you want to navigate those subjects, put together a concept map, and then share that concept map. Or maybe you're doing research. So in the slides, um, and by the way, the slides, if, to get to these slides, all you do is, is you go to the application, conceptmap.io, and then you go to um, the, this question mark here, and then it gives you some information about concept map, and then this link is getting started with conceptmap.io. That's the slides I'm using. So in the help, in these slides, I go through a learning and teaching scenario. And I'm just going to go through a live one with you, but I just wanted to let you know that those are there, and they explore the different types of things that you can do in this application. So I'm going to just go ahead and, and go through the, a scenario. First of all, when you, uh, when you bring up the application, the central uh, thing in the map over here, in the concept map on the left, is universe, so it just defaults to universe. And then the pieces of this application, other than the menu bar, um, are, are the concept map that you're going to build, 
and relationships from Wikidata. So all the relationships out uh, from and to the current concept. And then over on the right is the Wikipedia article uh, that is for that particular concept that's in focus. So let's say I have the universe here and I want to begin exploring uh, relationships to universe. So I can go, out, go down here to Wikidata relationships and I could see that um, one of the relationships is significant event. So I'll click on significant event and I see that there are several like Big Bang, uh, Lepton ep Epoch, Photon Epoch, and Quark Epoch. So um, maybe I want to uh, navigate to one of those and pin that. So I could say, okay, I want to go to Hadron Epoch. And now that's going to be in focus and I'll pin that to the map. And so now that I can see that one. And so I'm beginning to build up this concept map. Um, so I'll go back to universe and perhaps I don't want to individually pin those, but maybe I want to use a, um, uh, a search to be able to get all of the things in that particular relationship. So I'm gonna to go to back to significant event, but instead of clicking one of these events that's related, I'm gonna hit click X1, which means if, if you look at the tooltip that's expanded, it expands that item to one level. So now if I do that, it's gonna show me all the significant events for universe. So now I want to explore uh, one of those significant events, namely Big Bang. So I'm gonna click on Big Bang, and that one, the Big Bang then, becomes the focus item. These relationships now are, are in reference to Big Bang. And so now I wanna go ahead and explore that. But instead of using the Wikidata relationships like I have before, I'm gonna show you another way to explore. One way is semantically, but another way to explore is from the article itself. So I'll go down here in the article and I notice that, that there's a link that says, for the American TV sitcom, see the Big Bang Theory. So I'll go ahead and click on Big Bang Theory. And now that Wikipedia article comes up and that's the central theme then of, of that's, that's what's in focus now, Big Bang Theory. And that's what the relationships are about. So maybe I wanna see what all the characters are on the Big Bang Theory. TV show. So I'll go down here and notice uh, we have Wikidata relationships. These are the outbound relationships, but then we have a little bit further from related items. Those are inbound relationships from the perspective of what it's related to. So if I'll go to present and work, so the, I, the, the, uh, the characters that are present in the work of Big Bang Theory are people like Amy Farrah Fowler, Bernadette, Howard Wolowitz. If you know the Big Bang Theory, you know all those characters. So I'm gonna go ahead and click X1. I'm gonna expand that one. And then we'll see that all of the Big Bang Theory characters come up. And if they have relationships, like for example, uh, Bernadette and um, Howard are married, they're spouses. So, so we can see, it's a little bit hard to see there, but I'll go ahead and zoom in and we can see that they're spouses. So as we're creating the concept map, um, if there are any other relationships, even ones that we haven't specified or, or knew of, they're gonna show up. And then finally, let's say we want to share this concept map with someone. We could click this link over here, the link icon, and then it, uh, we can share the concept map. Here's a bit.ly link. I'll go ahead and copy. And let's say I want to share it via Twitter. So I'll go ahead and uh, I've composed a tweet here. All I need is the, the link. And then I'll go ahead and tweet it. And so if, uh, if someone then saw that tweet and then clicked that link, then it would, uh, it would pull up that concept map. So I'm going to go ahead and simulate that. I'm going to be someone that, that does that. Um, so I'm going to look for the uh, look for the link here. I'll just go into um, a Twitter client. So here's here's my tweet. 
There's the, uh, um, there's the link. So the, here's the bit.ly link. So then it pulls up the concept map application with the, uh, with the information that I've, I've, I've uh, uh, preserved that, I, um, that was up on the map when I clicked that link. So that's a, an easy way then to be able to create a concept map that you're trying to maybe teach somebody about uh, some domain of knowledge that, that you know about and then being able to share it with them either through tweeting it, emailing it, or, or those kinds of things. So now, if I go back to the presentation, I wanna show you the architecture behind it. Uh, this is a, uh, uh, at the bottom is an HTML5 application and it uses several microservices that are located in Pivotal Web Services, which is a, um, it's a subscription-based uh, service for hosting Cloud Foundry, Pivotal Cloud Foundry. So uh, they're categorized in several different areas, like um, I've got several web services that are, uh, that service w Wikidata kinds of things. So per perhaps if I, um, if I clicked on a Wikidata relationship, then it would use one of those services then to tell me what's on the other side of those, that relationship. Or if I needed the text of a Wikipedia article, I would, uh, it would use one of the services that's in Wikipedia services. Or if I need to graph, as you saw in the client, it shows a graph of the different relationships, then it uses GraphDB service. And then finally, the URL shortener that I did with the bit.ly link, that uses a, a short a bit.ly service, but I've got an edge service in the cloud icon there that has um, uh, just a, a web service, a REST service that uh, takes my request and then forwards it to the bit.ly service. So each one of those things in the big cloud, in the, in the, uh, the Cloud Foundry instance, the microservices that are working there, then um, are just are, are kind of edge services and they proxy for uh, where the, the work really happens, like in the bit.ly URL service or in the Neo4j DB hosting service or the, uh, the Wikimedia, which is both Wikipedia and Wikidata services. By the way, if you have any questions as we're going along, please, please do feel free to ask. Okay. So um, I'll just go through some, some use cases. And as I'm going through the use cases that you can use for this application, then I'll also be uh, diving into the microservices that, that they use. So one would be to search for something. So in this case, I'm gonna go ahead and, um, and clear the concept map, which is this icon here, erase the concept map. And then I'm going to type in moon. And so I'll type in moon. I could either drop down to, to, to see a choice or I could just hit search or enter but either way the moon comes up and I wanna pin that to the concept map. And then I'm gonna go ahead and chase a relationship. I'm gonna chase the, the parent astronomical body relationship. I'm gonna, but instead of doing X1, which will just expand it to one level, I'm gonna do X star, which expands it to multiple levels. So what's gonna happen then is it's gonna chase that relationship all the way up to where it's, it ends, where there, where there is no parent astronomical body. So I'll hit X star, and so it chases it from moon to earth to sun to, galact to galactic center of the Milky Way. And um, so the, the rest services that happen then, um, I won't go through all of them, but uh, when, I clicked, uh, when I clicked moon, or when I started typing in moon, then it started doing article search. And so when I hit M, then it did an article search, and that way it could populate the drop-down search box. And then when I finally did say, yeah, I want moon, and, and click the search button, 
than it called the wiki page endpoint passing the name, uh, which was moon. And then, um, and then it returned that, and then we saw, and then we passed that name to the ID locator, and then that gives us the, the Wikidata item ID. So all of the Wikipedia articles have a, a Wikidata item ID. So it, instead of a, a clear text like moon or Eric Clapton or something like that, it's a Q item. So Q and some number. And so then we use that then to send it to related claims and ID claims passing in the case of uh, Earth, it would be Q2 and the moon, I, I think it's 422 or something like that. And then that then gets sent to a Wikidata Sparkle endpoint, which then returns all the related items for that particular relationship. So that's kind of how that works. It's just an orchestration of uh, a whole bunch of microservices that are endpoints that, that you can use. I mean, it's all out there running um, so you could use them independent of this application that I've built, just um, in, uh, in other kinds of applications that consume those things if, if you'd like. It's all out there running in uh, Pivotal Web Services. So then um, uh, part of the use case then is pinning the Earth to the graph or pinning something to the graph. So I pinned the, the moon to the graph in this case. And when I did that, then it called the graph endpoint or viz graph endpoint now. I've renamed it since, since I created the slide. And then passing in the Wikidata Q item numbers uh, separated by commas. And then that gets passed to the Neo4j endpoint. Neo4j is a, is a uh, graph database, but it gets sent to that. And then it does a query, brings it back in JSON and then we display it on, in, the, uh, in the graph. So this is the Neo4j query. The language, the query language for Neo4j is Cypher. And so this is just simply that query where we match sending two items and then where uh, the item in those three things that we sent and the item in those three things are sent um, have something in common and then we, um, we bring back then the relationship. And so once we have that relationship and the collection of relationships, then we can feed, we can load that, that graph that we see here over on the left. That, by the way, is implemented by, a lot of people ask me if that's D3. It's not D3. I, I tried D3 um, and then progressed uh, because... Um, there, were some, there were some things I liked better in VizJS. So the visualization library I'm using over here is, is actually VizJS, which is a, it runs on JavaScript. So um, I mentioned that I wrote this in Java and Spring, and uh, I, I like Spring whether I work for Pivotal or not. It's, Spring's a great a great uh, toolkit and, and a great facility for being able to quickly uh, stand up REST services, for example. Uh, there are annotations for doing that. So I can use this REST controller annotation for creating a REST controller. And then um, I can create uh, an endpoint, that graph endpoint, by using the annotation request mapping. And then I can associate a method, that search method, and then use the request param tag to, um, to define what, uh, what parameters are going to be sent to that endpoint. And then I give it some, uh, a body and the method then to be able to do the things it needs to do, like call the other services and things. And so it's just incredibly easy with Spring to be able to, to do that. Uh, as far as representing then, when, when you call a REST endpoint, you've got to send it some data. And the, the um, instance I showed you, they were gets, where we just send in uh, an attribute or a parameter to the REST service and then, you know, comma separated values. But what comes back is JSON. And so with Spring, it's incredibly easy then to uh, articulate 
what's going to come back. But you just use a plain old Java object, and then it serializes it automatically over the wire in, to JSON. So here is what we're serializing, just the information for items that, that are coming back. So another um, use case then is maybe I want to change the language. So in this case, um, we're using English. So somebody just give me a, another language that, that you'd like to see this translated into. Danish? Okay, let's see if, let's see if that's one of the languages here. So, so uh, Danish. Danish. Tell me if you see Danish here. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so, so I'll go ahead and do that then. So uh, Solen, Jordan, Manen, is that, oh, is that how that goes? Okay. I, and so um, the ones that, uh, the items then that, that have um, uh, an, an entry in Wikidata translated, you know, for, for each of those languages, it'll go ahead and show you the translation. If it doesn't have that, then it's going to go ahead and default to the one that you, you had before you, you selected that. And so then here is the Wikipedia article in Danish, and notice then the relationships are in Danish. So, so then I could just go back to um, English. So here we go. So another use case would be to share the link, and I've shown you that, but uh, what's happening behind the scenes then is that we're calling that edge service. It's a, a REST service whose endpoint name is bit.ly, and then we're passing the items, and then giving it the language, and then it's calling the bit.ly service, and then returning the link, and then we're showing it in the UI. Um, so here's a, another use case, a breadth first search. Now I've, I've kind of already showed you that with the, the X1 and the X star, but um, I'll give you a, a more of a research scenario. Uh, perhaps I'm interested in, um, in causes of, of some form of cancer. I'll just say bladder cancer. So I'm going to say bladder cancer. And I'm just going to start to research about that. So I'll uh, click the search. There's bladder cancer over there. And maybe I want to know what the genetic associations are for bladder cancer. Uh, so I go here and I click X1 on expanding genetic associations. And so I can see that there's these genes associated with that. And so I'm going to pick on this one, PCA, or PSCA. And then now I want to know what chromosomes are, are related to PCSA. So I'll go ahead and click on this relationship the chromosome, and I can see that it is chromosome number eight. So I'll click on chromosome number eight, and I'll pin that item, and that pins it to the graph, and notice that we see this relationship, this chromosome. But, but now I want to see all the chromosomes and see how all the chromosomes are related to all of the, um, all of the genes that are associated with bladder cancer. So I'm going to... Um, click X star on the followed by relationship. And that will, that will do a breadth first search on, until, until the end, until there are, are no more uh, items in that relationship. And so now we have eight through, um, through actually 22, and then followed by X and Y chromosomes. And while we're at that, then we'll go ahead and click X star on follows. So what chromosomes does chromosome 8 follow? So I'll click that. And then we, we can see that, uh, well, chromosome 8 follows 1, 2, 3, etc. And we can also see, as we zoom back out here, the chromosomes that we put here, that, that came up here, have relationships with the other genes. And so we can see those in, in our concept map. And then we could share that if we want to. 
again, if you, if you have any questions as we're going through, please, please do ask. Or just ideas or anything, ideas for the next iteration. Um, so here's another use case, and that is what do two items have in common? So for example, if uh, just a toy example, if I wanted to know what Batman and Superman had in common, I could go to the concept map, erase it, and click uh, Batman. And then pin. And then I could click, uh, I could uh, type in Superman. And then pin that item. So up at the top, I have IC for in common. What do these things have in common? And then RP, and I'm going to get into what RP is in a minute. But um, so I click one of them, and I'll hit IC for in common, and then I'll click the other one. And so, so Superman is already selected, so I'll hit in common with Batman. And so now it will call all those web services that, that I showed you, and then will return the, uh, the things that both of those have in common. So Batman and Superman, they were both in Batman versus Superman, the Dawn of Justice. They were both uh, in the Justice League. They were both in Dark Knight Returns. They're both superheroes. They're both male. So that's, that's a way for any two particular things like people or any, really any two items that are in Wikipedia to find out what they have in common. Um, so another scenario then, uh, by the way, this is the Neo4j cipher query that's behind that. Um, another scenario is navigate to root. So just like um, objects and classes in object-oriented languages have a hierarchy, class hierarchy, the, um, the items in Wikidata are arranged in a hierarchy. And it's not as, you know, because it's something that's, that people maintain, it's not a perfect hierarchy and it's not always, um, you know, uh, ex exactly, um, exactly accurate, and so um, you know there are there are three kinds of uh, relationships that where where a um, an item might have a relationship with an item above it, and uh, one is a subclass of, one is a part of, and one of one is instance of, and so in this this use case where we're chasing. Uh, the relationships uh, to the root, we're going to chase all three of those and, and uh, show all three of those. So um, this is the, these are the queries that are used, or the rest endpoints. There's root paths. You give it a QID number, a, a Wikipedia ID number, and then it calls the Neo4j endpoint and then returns the uh, all of the items that it encountered when going all the way to the root and then displays it. So I'll go ahead and do a use case here or a, an example. I'm going to say 3D chess. So there's 3D chess and I'll pin the item. And then I'll hit RP for root path. And so we'll find then that three-dimensional chess is a board game, and a board game is a subclass of tabletop game. A tabletop game is a, game is a subclass of good, but it's also a subclass of product. And um, if we chase uh, that from good all the way up to a physical object, which is a, sub, a subclass of uh, object, which is a subclass of entity, and everything is goes up to entity. That's kind of the root of all the Wikidata items. Okay. So then uh, here's another, um, or there's the Neo4j cipher query. Now as far as from a spring perspective, uh, to, to be able to make this executable, this Java spring application executable, uh, it's very simple actually. Um, after your imports, we uh, enable configuration properties and then we have a, we tell it via 
an annotation that this is going to be a Spring Boot application. Spring Boot is a way of being able to quickly put together an application, uh, and it makes assumptions and, and uh, opinions uh, so that you uh, can easily then just write the code that you want to write, and it, uh, it, it makes it very easily to, to be deployed in, in one jar file and that can be sent up to the cloud. So in this case, what we do is I've got wiki browser service application. We just put a main method in it, and then we use spring application run, passing it uh, the class and some arguments. And so that's all there is to it. And the application build deploy cycle is uh, very, very simple. Make a code change, do a Maven clean install, and then do a CF push. CF is, again, Cloud Foundry, uh, which, and by the way, Cloud Foundry runs on top of, um, of, of the major infrastructure as a service provider. So uh, Cloud Foundry runs on Azure, um, Google Cloud Platform, AWS, on-premise, and um, so it just pretty much runs anywhere. So um, if you are creating applications, then it's easy to push them to the cloud using just CF push rather than having to use and know about all the infrastructure and APIs of the different cloud platforms. So it kind of abstracts that for you. And so this is the, uh, this is the Pivotal Web Services console. Uh, you can go to, um, uh, to, to run.pivotal.io and, and get a subscription. Uh, I think it's 60 days for free or something if you just want to play with it. Um, it's a really nice way of being able to, uh, to create applications and put them out there for the world to see and to use. And it's a very, very um, inexpensive uh, subscription cost. Um, you know, for, for you know, hardcore production, applications, uh, corpor you know, corporations will buy subscriptions to run on-prem or, or um, on their cloud providers, but uh, it's an easy way for you and, you and I to, to be able to go in and just put our applications out there in the world. And uh, to get started with Spring, to create a, a new Spring application, uh, the, the place to go then is start.spring.io, and you can make choices for your application, like does it need to be, uh, is it going to be a REST service? Does it need, um, does it need uh, spring data? Things like that. And so you can make those choices and then it, it gives you uh, a starter project to be able to put code into. So the last um, use case that I want to show you is, is called degrees of separation. So since, you know, Wikipedia has, you know, millions and millions of of articles in it, and Wikidata, of course, has millions and millions as well because there's one, there's one item for every Wikipedia article. So some of those items are, are sports figures and, and actor, actors, actresses. So um, we can play then this degrees of separation game like the Kevin Bacon game, um, either with, and by the way, uh, we could do it with sports figures or, or actors. So which would you rather do? Would you, would you rather play it with uh, actors or sports figures as we punch in a couple and find out how they're related? So actors, actors. I, I think I heard actors. So, um, so somebody give me, please, the name of an actor. Tom Hanks. OK, this is going to be an easy one, right? So somebody has to now give me the name of someone that's as far away uh, removed from Tom Hanks as you can think of, so that we can see kind of a long relationship. Buster Keaton. Buster Keaton. Okay, very good. So we'll type in Buster Keaton. And we'll pin that item. And so the relationship we want to chase there uh, from Buster Keaton to Tom Hanks is actually uh, a reverse relationship um, cast member. So what, um, you know, so what, 
movie or show or, or whatever was Buster Keaton a cast member in that is in common with Tom Hanks or, or another actor that, that is related through some, some show or movie. So that's a, um, if you think about that relationship, it's an undirected relationship because it goes from, um, from a person, from an actor, to uh, a show, to a person, to a show. So it's, it's, it can be one way and then the other. So we call that an undirected relationship. So we're gonna find the shortest path between those two actors in an undirected manner through cast member. So to do that, we, we've selected Buster, and, um, and I'm going to click the, the, the icon that's labeled PU, which means shortest path undirected. So I'll click that, and then I'll click Tom Hanks, and then we'll find out how they're related. Going through all those, those uh, REST APIs and things, that, uh, that I've already showed you. So it turns out it's uh, pretty short, actually. Um, Tom Hanks was in, uh, with Harry Dean Stanton in The Green Mile, who was in The Adventures of Huckleberry Finn with Buster Keaton, okay? All right, so that's about the end of my presentation, actually. Um, yeah. So any questions on that? Any ideas for future iterations? Any, any uh, parting thoughts before I, before I let you go? Yes. Okay. Okay, um, so the question is, uh, the, the request is, I'd like to be able to get to a city, uh, you know, by, from another city by transferring between, you know, to find out. And so um, I don't know, the, I, don't, I don't know offhand, and I don't want to speculate right now, you know, and, you know and, and tempt the demo gods, but I do have a very similar scenario, and that would be, um, I know that there is a relationship between countries and states and things like that. And so let's say that we wanted to get from California to Florida crossing state lines, right? And so then that's another, uh, that's another undirected relationship because, um, uh, because we're, well, is it? I don't know. Let's see. Okay, so let's, uh, let's actually look here. Um, so I'm going to go here and we're going to, let's start in Florida for example, and uh, yeah, there's Florida, we'll pin that item, oops, pin that item, there we go, we'll get, let's get rid of Buster here, so unpin Buster, and then um, select Florida, and then we'll uh, go to California, In that, and then let's look. At, let's look for a relationship. So there's California, and um, shares border with. Okay, so let's do um, an undirected relationship between California and Florida on shares border with. So here we go. PU and Florida. So it's not going to, it'll be the shortest path through the database through those states, not necessarily the for shortest path geographically. Your mileage literally may vary, right? So here we've got uh, California, Arizona, New Mexico, et cetera. So that's, that's kind of the scenario you talked about. Okay, good. Other questions? Sorry, yes. Yes, okay, so the question is how is Wikidata maintained? And, you know, that's, uh, um, so it's uh, 
populated by lots of data dumps, for example, uh, to prime the pump, I guess. For, uh, so there was a project called Freebase. May, many of you may have heard of it. Um, and it was, it was this idea of having an open database of, of um, items and entities and, you know, uh, musical artists and you know geograph geography and all sorts of kind all sorts of things, and so then Google bought that, and um, and then they um, let's see like like they, they used part of that they used the idea for their knowledge graph, and so a lot of the things in the knowledge graph was was populated by uh, by Freebase, um, and then. Uh, the, all the data in Freebase then was, was given to Wikidata. So it was populated then. So Wikidata was in part populated by that, but also populated by lots of other data dumps everywhere. And so it's very much a, um, it's an orchestrated process, but orchestrated by humans getting dumps from, from places. So there are some areas where it's very, very good, very accurate. Like for example, in the, um, in the uh, actors and movies and things like that, there are some areas where it's not yet so so accurate. Um, so, uh, one enhancement I'd like to make um, is is to uh, is to also look at DBpedia. DBpedia is uh, a site that has relationships um, uh, between Wikipedia. And the way that the DBpedia was populated was by the info boxes in Wikipedia. So it would crawl the it would crawl the info boxes and populate the database. So the things it's it's kind of the out of sight, out of mind. But if you know if uh, um, if something is in front of people, then it's going to be kept more accurate. So the Wikipedia info boxes are kept very up to date and accurate. DBpedia crawls those and keeps that very accurate. So, uh, so one enhancement I'd like to make is, is also use DBpedia as well as Wikipedia, Wikidata to provide the semantic relationships. So someday when Wiki, Wikidata is, is, uh, is more mature and accurate, then, and, and, and actually it's happening now, uh, where the info boxes are actually populated by Wikidata. So it's the, it's the way it actually should be kind of um, to where the info boxes are data driven. Um, and so there's this, um, uh, there's this evolution that's happening where it will get more and more accurate and you know, one, as one feeds the other. So a long-winded answer to a question I trust that you are interested in the answer. Okay, other, other questions? Okay, very good, thank you very much for your attention. <laughs>